I knew you was going to call me. Just we knew you knew. <laughs> Did you know we knew that he knew? No doubt? No doubt. Yeah. Now what? I would like to talk about money. I understand calling things into our experience, and that's wealth, money, etc. Calling is one thing, allowing is another, yeah? Yes, and I've also been understanding that to call more money into my experience, I must spend money as if I have the money. Well, I must spend... It's a good way to call debt into your experience. <laughs> <laughs> So I am wondering, how do I spend money without fear? You can't spend money that you don't have well, without some trepidation. It's about momentum and balance, isn't it? Don't yes. get too far off into it. Yes. We're going to sort this out. We're just going to torture you for a little okay. while. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and another part of that is I'm married, so, and I have a son a 15-year-old son. So how do I get all of us, my husband, my son, and myself, on the same plane to call these experiences into our life? Well, you've asked an important question, and it's one that almost everyone relates to. And it really is a subject that is easy for us to remind you what we were talking about earlier, because the first thing that we want to ask you is, do you think you are more often in a place where you are thinking about and feeling about money or thinking about and feeling about not enough money. Because every subject is two subjects, what is wanted in absence of it. And so you can answer that question by knowing if you feel optimistic or worried, if you feel eager or angry or eager or frustrated. In other words, you can tell by the way you feel whether you're thinking about money in the way the source within you is thinking about it for you or whether you're thinking about it in a different way. Now, here's another way that you could look at this. We know if you've been listening to us at all, you've heard every bit of that before. So no new news there. Mm -hmm. but we're going to keep talking until you hear some new news because until you find another way of looking at this, nothing's going to shift in you. And unless something shifts, then your experience can't change. So that's what we do. We keep coming at it from another direction and another direction and another direction until suddenly you have an understanding and then you feel different. And when you feel different, then you attract different. And when you attract different, then you experience different manifestations. So that's the whole objective here in this really important topic. For a long time, we've been talking to you that creation is about asking, source answering, and you letting the answer in. Step one, two, three. Asking's easy, isn't it? Especially if you have a 15-year-old. Our partner is asking too. In other words, the more delicious life is, often the more things that you want to experience in it, the more experiences you want to have. So the asking part is not a hard part. When you don't have enough of something, you know that you want more. Source recognizes every time you ask. Now here's an important thing that you may not have heard us say before about this step two. Source knows what you're asking for and only has a vibration about what you are really asking for. So this is interesting. When you feel like you don't have enough money and it causes you just for a moment to send off a rocket, I would like more money, meaning I want more freedom. I want more experience. Your inner being becomes the essence of the freedom and the essence of the experience. Your inner being extracts from that vibrational contrasting experience what you do want because that's what your inner being does. Your inner being never focuses on the drama or the trauma or the trouble or the lack, ever. So from your synthesis of life, you've never heard us say that before, have you? <laughs> From your synthesizing of life, you are emitting pure desires that your inner being is recognizing, focusing on, and taking as inner being point of attraction. Now, 
Do you accept that there's you and your inner being? Do you accept that your inner being is offering a vibration and that law of attraction is responding to your inner being's vibration, just like law of attraction is responding to yours? So when you ask for more prosperity, your inner being immediately becomes the equivalent of more prosperity. But if you don't immediately become the equivalent of prosperity vibrationally, as in being optimistic or anticipation, then there's a vibrational difference between you and your inner being. And that's when you feel doubt or fear or worry or jealousy or anger or whatever those feelings around money often are. So the good news here is that your inner being has become more prosperous every time life has caused you to seek more prosperity. But you've got to find some way of syncing up with the way your inner being feels about this. And when you do, now there's no contradiction in your vibration. There's no tug of war going on. Now you and your powerful inner being are standing in the eye of the vortexual hurricane that law of attraction is causing around you and more money is coming to you. But in your anticipation positive anticipation you're letting it in you're not keeping it out now that's just the law-based explanation of how the money comes to you now another way that we are wanting to explain this to you is that when you feel good you're in sync with your inner being and when you're in sync with your inner being that means you're in what we're calling the receptive mode of what your inner being has already amassed and attracted so if you can accept the prosperity that your inner being already is, then you can be the receptive translator of that vibrational prosperity into the manifestation of what you want. We wrote a book called Getting Into the Vortex because we wanted to make this vibrational version of you something that felt more real to you because you can't see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it. This non-physical aspect of you that exists, that is attracting the things that you are asking for to this specific vibrational context that you now have ready access to, this is a reality, but because you can't translate it yet through your eyes and ears and so on, then you often see absence of money rather than presence of money, even though there is a vibrational presence of money. So then you say, and we don't blame you, we get what you're saying, Abraham, how do I get my money out of the vortex and into my bank? How do I turn these thoughts to things? Because I can't spend the idea of money. A lot of you are trying, that's what you're saying, with your credit and so forth. The idea of money coming, I'll just spend it before I get it. Not such a good idea, really. Well, that's not exactly what I meant. Well, but, we understand but, what you mean. Yeah, I hold on to money because I think no more is going to come, so I won't spend it. Oh. <laughs> So I'm afraid that it won't continue to flow. Like, But listen to your words. I'm afraid. Right. I'm worried. I'm afraid. So what does that mean? So that means you're not looking at the money that's coming in the way that your inner being is looking at the money that's coming. You're not. I, I see it as temporary. For, I don't, and I don't know how to let that go, I guess. It's because it's always the fear of not knowing where it's going to come from. Well, we understand that. But where does anything come from? Everything comes out of the vortex. You are a lovely bunch of people on this planet and you are trucking no resources in from other planets. <laughs> and yet your economy continues to expand. Where is it coming from? It's coming from life and from asking. So this is the part that we're really wanting you to hear. So can you accept at all that there is a vibrational version? Absolutely. That's the hard part. There's a vibrational version that you have not realized yet mm -hmm. if you accept that it's there then this is the question that we want you to contemplate we're going to get here together if it exists in vibrational form how does it become a reality how does the idea of prosperity translate into something that is in my bank account how do I turn those vibrations to those thoughts to those things how does that happen well, it happens by your practicing the thoughts that allow it to turn to those things, not practicing the opposite of those thoughts. When you say, I'm afraid there won't be enough, that's practicing the opposite of the thoughts. And we know, oh, it must drive you crazy. Abraham, if you were standing where I'm standing, look at me what I'm looking at, you'd feel the way I feel. And we say, we know that what you are living 
feels so real because what you are feeling is turning to things all the time so if you don't feel like there's enough money then that's the way it's turning out and then you say see I was right this worry was valid this worry was accurate because I worried about this and this is the way that it is see I'm right I'm right to worry and we say the universe will respond to the vibration that you emit so you have to show yourself something different you've got to find a way to and this was the question that you asked so do I just pretend like I've got the money and do I spend it even though I don't have it and we say not until you feel that confidence or that prosperity so you heard all of that and we yeah, know I, you're not it's hard when you have a husband wait and you're wait, 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 wait 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 <laughs> now you're arguing for your limitations even yeah. further that's what holds you in that place we understand and we get why you're feeling the way you do but we are going to help you find another way of looking at this that will shift something in you that will change your point of attraction so on we go you create your own reality blah 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 you ask and you throw it in the vortex blah 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 we know you're sick to death of the vortex <laughs> but now here the prosperity is in the vortex how are you going to get it out how are you going to translate into your experience the prosperity that we promise you blah 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 is there it's there how are you going to get it out how are you going to be the realizer of it well you've got to understand that it's broadcasting to you if you can understand creation in terms of broadcasting and receiving broadcasting and receiving broadcasting and receiving broadcasting and receiving so your inner being is broadcasting prosperity but you're broadcasting doubt how's that working out your inner being is broadcasting one thing you're broadcasting another can you set your radio dial on 106 FM and hear what's being broadcast on 98.7 no. can you receive from a different frequency you've got to line up with the frequency that your inner being is broadcasting so that's the first big question that we want to put to you do you believe that through your life you have created a vibrational version of your prosperity and that your inner being stands holding it knowing it being it and broadcasting it I do <sighs> and since your inner being is broadcasting it what does that mean about your inner beings experience relative to law of attraction if your inner being is broadcasting prosperity what does that mean is coming back to your inner being prosperity oh, that vortex is dynamic it's dynamic it's growing it's big it's riches that you cannot identify yet and it's real so you want some of it just a little of it please <laughs> there's enough in your vortex to keep you thriving for 20 or 30 lifetimes that's how dynamic it is that's how big it is and you want some of it how are you going to get it you got to tune your tuner to the frequency of what your inner being is broadcasting which is what we're calling the receptive mode you got to get in the receptive mode you've got to think like your inner being thinks in order to be in that receptive mode you can't be blaming your husband you can't be blaming the economy you can't be blaming government you can't be blaming an employer you can't be focused on the absence of what you want and tune your tuner to what your inner being is broadcasting and your inner being is not going to change its broadcast to match yours ever your inner being is going to stand in your prosperity you got to find a way to be there too so let's talk about you being in the receptive mode so the receptive mode means you've got your tuner set for something and if you're walking around in this world like most people what you're observing is what's causing you to, to set your tuner complaints from your partner um, different things that are happening in your life bills Esther said her tuner from a telephone call she received just for a moment until she realized she'd done it and then she said uh oh gotta go and then she did something about setting her tuner differently you see what we're getting at yeah. in other words if you're aware when you're doing it now money is the hardest thing really because that's the thing that you've been worried about the most for the longest and that's the thing that you've activated a bunch of vibrations about usually that you're not going to change overnight but you can change them and you must if you want the prosperity that is due to you you've got to cash in that vibrational currency